New year, new me. Let's talk about some New Year's resolutions for Arizona State Sun Devils football on this edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 2023. And welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils, football, basketball, and otherwise. Thank you guys for making us your first listen of the day. Remember, you can check out this podcast wherever you're getting your podcasts, including YouTube. If you want to see us in a visual platform, wherever you're getting those podcasts, though, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Stay in touch with that content, obviously, by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrad36, and you can find the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Let's hop into today's conversation. It's a new year. It's 2023. We are back for our first episode of the new year after I took yesterday off as a little extended holiday weekend for myself. We are going to make some New Year's resolutions. And these ones are a little a little more broad, but I will be breaking them down a little bit more in detail because there's definitely little things that Arizona State can do. But this is going to be a very different team in 2023 compared to 2022 not only from a organizational standpoint, but from a a player perspective. There are a lot of kids that are in the portal. We have officially reached 20 after Connor Soley, who was projected to be one of the, like probably like the guy at the linebacker position, ends up declaring, or not declaring, entering the transfer portal and will seek out other options to further his career. He will not stay at Arizona State the whole time, like his brother Kyle did, unfortunately. So there's a lot of changes that are coming to Arizona State Sun Devils. There's a lot of guys that are coming in, though. As of right now, there are 18 new players that are coming through the transfer portal, both offensive and defensively. This is a new team. This is an exciting future for Arizona State. And we got to start things off with the defensive side of the football. For our New Year's resolutions, nice and obvious, it's got to be better. Arizona State's defense, no secret last year, was not great. Arizona State was constantly giving up 30-plus points a game. They were digging themselves holes. They weren't able to get and generate enough pressure. And while the interception numbers were there and the interception numbers were very nice, that's largely because of more opportunity to intercept balls. Arizona State did not force very many fumbles last year. They only forced five, and they recovered a whopping one of them. So, yes, the interceptions are there, but the sacks need to be there, the pressures and tackles for loss, and the ability to generate more turnovers than just interceptions needs to be there. This is going to be very difficult to do in year one for Arizona State. So we just want to see some minor improvement. Maybe holding teams under 30 points a game is a huge step forward. Generating more than 17 sacks as a team. That would be another huge step in the right direction for Arizona State. Obviously, with the loss of Kyle Sully, Arizona State is now losing four of its uh, its top four tacklers from a year ago with Kyle Sully, Corey Bethley, Merlin Robertson, and Nesta Jade Silvera gone from the program. Connor Sully had 30 tackles a year ago. He's gone. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of retooling that this defense is going to be doing. So to expect it to go from one of the worst in the Pac-12 to one of the best in the Pac-12 is definitely a little bit unrealistic. That being said, you do have Brian Ward coming in as the new defensive coordinator. He's taking on the same role that he had with Washington State when he had them as one of the best defenses in the Pac-12, with an argument for the best, depending on the statistic that you wanted to look at. They are bringing in a lot of guys defensively, especially at the linebacker position. And that's really, really important when you consider that Arizona State is losing Connor Sully now. But one of the guys, Travion Brown, played for Washington State, 
played under Brian Ward and knows the system. So hopefully that'll be able to get Arizona State to take a step forward. Their run defense last year really got gashed a lot of times. Guys like Michael Wiley for U of A and Eastern Michigan and Utah were able to just run amok UCLA. They absolutely carved up Arizona State on the ground. That's got to get better. It's going to be a work in progress, though. The defensive line is going to be entirely different. You were able to convince Anthony Cooper and BJ Green to withdraw their names from the portal, but nonetheless, three guys enter the portal. Three guys are no longer eligible to play college football. It's going to be a new defensive line. Asking for them to instantly become major difference makers against the run is going to be very unrealistic. Also asking them to generate more sacks, again, unrealistic. Anthony Cooper and BJ Green tied last year with two other players for four total players with two and a half sacks. There's no reason those numbers can't improve. Looking at the secondary, there were some moments of really great play from the secondary. Uh, guys like Chris Edmonds and Roe Torrance and Ed Woods are all back, and all three of them played very strong last year. And some of them, like Ed Woods especially, played very, very well down the stretch last year and have that potential to continue taking that next step forward. This is where I'm going to set my expectations a little bit higher compared to the guys in the front seven because there is a lot more familiarity in the secondary compared to the front seven, which is funny because that was the exact opposite script last year where there was more continuity on the front seven than there was on the back end of the defense. But the secondary has a lot more continuity. Again, you have Ed Woods, uh, Roe Torrance, and Chris Edmonds that will be coming back. Uh, what's his name? He's right in front of me, if I can find him on my list. Goodness gracious. Jordan Clark will also be returning as well. That's four starters in the secondary. Uh, Jordan Clark, for what it's worth, can play some safety. He can also play nickel corner. That's really, really good for Arizona State to have three corners or two corners and two safeties, depending on what you want to do with Clark. So I want to see some really good improvement in the secondary. I want to see Roe Torrance take that next step towards being a lockdown corner. He's a big, massive dude at six foot four, 200 something pounds. This is a good guy who can be a really strong press coverage kind of player. Ed Woods, also a really good size at six foot 180 pounds. Again, he played really strong down the stretch when he got more starting opportunities. I'm looking forward to him taking a step forward as well. The secondary needs to improve. If the secondary does improve, the rest of your defense will improve because the better coverage you have, the more time that the quarterback is going to have to hold on to the ball, which helps generate sacks. You can eliminate some of the deep passing attacks, which forces everything in the front. And that gives the, se the front seven, excuse me, more opportunities to create plays. When one unit of your, of your defense is playing great, the other unit is going to benefit. So this year it's going to be on the secondary a little more than it normally would be for them to play better, right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just part of what Arizona State needs right now is their defensive secondary to step up and be better than it, it was last year. Again, there were glimpses of greatness. It's not as though these guys can't do it. I'm definitely going to be expecting a little bit more from the secondary than I will be from the front seven. All in all, though, I think we're just going to be looking for improvement throughout the defense. If we can just find a way to be better than we were last year, I'm hoping that the offense will be able to take some steps forward and produce more on its end as well. And you culminate those together, that equals more wins. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the offense here next in just one moment. First, as small businesses, as, excuse me, as a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching matching open roles with people who have skills, values, and experiences to help achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the qual quickly helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 member profiles, 
875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions will apply. As always, make sure that you are tuning in to the Locked On Sports Today podcast as your second listen of the day. The biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes or less. Instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you go to get your podcasts. Back into our conversation, looking at the other side of the football, I think the biggest step forward that the team can make here is to just solidify the offensive weapons that they have and get them to that next step. There are a handful of guys that are on the cusp of great, of greatness, of greatness, none more so than Elijah Badger, who truly came into his own this season and proved to be a reliable, consistent, effective, and deadly number one receiver for Arizona State Sun Devils football. He ended the year with 70 receptions for 866 yards and seven touchdowns. Those numbers were by far the highest amongst the team. He had 30 more receptions in second place. He had 366 more yards than second place, and he had two more touchdowns than second place. Elijah Badger is clearly the face of this Arizona State Sun Devils passing attack. He has proven to me that he's capable of taking that next step. There were more than flashes with Elijah Badger showing off the the goods to be a borderline elite receiver. There is the potential here for Elijah Badger to become a a top five receiver in the Pac-12. I truly believe it. Now, it's not going to be easy because you have so many guys in the Pac-12. Off the top of my head, I can't remember anyone's name, obviously, but U of A has Jacob Cowing. You just had the other U of A receiver who transferred to USC. Oregon's got guys, Utah's got guys, there's plenty of guys, but Elijah Badger can truly compete and take that next step forward to become a great receiver in this conference. He's got the goods, he's got the size, he's got the frame of work, he's got the potential. I also would like to see Jalen Conyers get involved more and turn into the beastly weapon that he can be. When Sean Aguano took over play calling about midway through the season, he took off. It started off with his three touchdown breakout game against Colorado, and he did not cool down after that game. He was just an absolute difference maker for the team. The way he could post up, make big plays, and the touchdowns that he had, there there was a lot to be excited about for a guy with 38 catches, 422 yards, and five touchdowns. He can be the best tight end that the Sun Devils have had in quite some time. I mean, it's been a long time since the Sun Devils have had a tight end of Jalen Conyers caliber. I want to see the offense continue to tailor itself to getting the tight ends involved. And not just Jalen Conyers. I do want to see Messiah Swinson more. But I think that Conyers can become one of the biggest offensive weapons for this team. There's a lot to be excited about with this guy. His combination of of size. He's quicker than he is fast, but he can definitely stretch the field a little bit. And he's got a huge frame for his catch radius. I really like the idea of Jalen Conyers becoming the number two option in this offense. Running back will be interesting. Cameron Scadabo and Carlos Brooks are coming in through the transfer portal, of course, to provide some depth there. Uh, Xavier and Valade and Daniel Nagata are both gone from the program, leaving Tevin White as potentially the lead guy for this team. The run game was very important to Arizona State last year. Hopefully it continues to be that way. But there's some other guys in the passing game that I want to see get involved as well. Xavier Guillory is one of the prized possessions that the Sun Devils were able to get through the transfer portal. I don't see a reason why he can't potentially be the number two on this team. The same with Jake Smith, if he's able to stay healthy. 
I know a lot of people will be excited about the tiny spark plug, literally, that Mel Constaval is. Obviously, we're all going to be looking forward to Giovanni Sanders continuing what was a very strong season for him a year ago and now going into his uh, senior season for the team. He was 40 catches, 500 yards, and a touchdown. There's a lot of weapons here for Arizona State to use. And again, Messiah Swenson, I briefly mentioned him. I want to see Arizona State continue to develop their offensive weapons. I want to see them solidify guys like Elijah Badger and Jalen Conyers as big-time playmakers here. If they're able to take that next step forward, the Sun Devils offense could be incredibly potent this year. And with Kenny Dillingham coming in as an offensive mind, you're going to be hoping that they're going to be able to, what's the word I'm looking for? Get the most out of this offense and get the most out of these weapons who legitimately have shown some of the stuff to potentially be NFL draft prospects in the future. I I think that Elijah Badger and Jalen Conyers both have the profiles the teams are going to be looking for, and another strong season could help help really benefit them to get to that next step in their careers. If anyone can get the most out of them, I definitely believe that Kenny Dillingham is potentially that guy. I'm going to be counting on Dillingham to get the most out of this offense moving forward. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season, basketball, and more. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action happening right now at BetOnline, where the game starts. One more time, make sure that you guys are tuning in to the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Make it your second listen of the day as Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports Today podcast, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Final New Year's resolution for this team. And this is the one where... I shoot for the moon a little bit. Let's get back to being bowl eligible. This team is not the best team in the Pac-12, not even close. This team is still probably in the lower half of the Pac-12. This team is probably not ready to be a bowl team in year one of Kenny Dillingham. Nonetheless, I am setting that expectation to get back to 500 football, be a six and six team, be competitive, win some good games and just return to prominence. Arizona state is a school that is used to going to bowl games. It's used to being a above 500 team. They're used to being competitive every once in a while competing for the PAC 12, every once in a while making some big splashes and appearing in the AP top 25 poll. That's the expectation with Arizona state. Kenny Dillingham is inheriting that expectation, and I'm sure he wants to be even more than that. I'm sure Kenny Dillingham would prefer to get back to Arizona State being one of the more prominent teams in the Pac-12. It's going to be a process. It's going to take time. It's not going to be instant success here. There's a lot of new moving pieces. There's a brand new coaching staff in place. There is... A lot of guys who have entered the transfer portal. There's a lot of guys who no longer have eligibility and are moving on from the team. There are a lot of new guys that are coming from the transfer portal. And there's a lot of guys that are coming in as recruits who weren't previously familiar with the with, with this coaching staff. That's a lot of things to be juggling in one offseason. Being a 6-6 six and six football team would be phenomenal for Kenny Dillingham in his first year. And I'm going to hold him to that because I think that he's capable of doing that. I think this team is capable of doing that. They lost a lot of close games last year. Like seriously, the Stanford game could have been flipped. U of A was a very close game as well. Uh, They played UCLA tough. And if they get some defensive stops or if the offense doesn't wet the bed throughout the game, you could have potentially pulled off an upset there as well. 
you played USC tough on the road. You played Oklahoma State tough on the road. And more often than not, I like you to be Eastern Michigan. There were a lot of close games this year. And that's what's going to separate a good team from a bad team is being able to close out those games and win just flat out, just win. So I think that Kenny Dillingham is going to be able to get Arizona state back to that point. It might not be 2023, but that should still be your goal. I want to see Arizona state make progress. It's hard to be be to be worse than a three and nine football team, but this is also a team that could have been five and seven could have been five and seven. Heck, it could have been six and six this year if they just get a couple games to flip their way instead. So with that in mind, I don't see a reason why Arizona State can't get back to that point. I don't see a reason why Arizona State can't be back sooner rather than later. I'm not going to be saying that this team needs to be back to eight wins, right? Like we're used to seeing. That seems a little bit unrealistic. So we'll get to that point. But I do think that Arizona State is capable of getting back to being a 6-6 and football team, competing in games, making games tough, fun to watch. That's definitely a big thing there. It's all going to be part of this process. Arizona State is capable of doing these things sooner rather than later. I will be completely understanding if they aren't. If they're another three and nine team, or if they're a four win team or a five win team, if you show me progress, I'll be happy. But sometimes you got to shoot for the moon with your New Year's resolutions. So I want to see Arizona State get back to bowl eligibility as a six and six team at a minimum. I think that they're capable of doing that. Let's go ahead and wrap up this edition of the podcast. So thank you guys as always for tuning in. Remember, you can get this podcast free and available on all platforms. Go ahead and Subscribe, like, follow wherever you're getting your podcasts. Turn on notifications so you get an update when we post new content. And stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and at LO underscore Sun Until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.